Hello, my friends. It's wonderful seeing you here. DLD 2019. It's really great. Let's start right away. Outside, we have more than 100 people waiting, but we have to start because we have such a packed program. So I start with our motto, optimism and courage. Why did I choose this? You all know, globalization with its geopolitical conflicts, climate change, migration, the shifting balance of economic power, and of course, with, with digitization, are rapidly transforming our world. This change is so unsettling that it fosters fear, sarcasm, and pessimism among many of us. It fosters a longing for the proverbial, the good old days, where there was more stability, less complexity, and more humanity, question mark. Do we just think this? Are we just looking for easy answers to complex problems? Indeed, it's very, very easy to be a pessimist. But it's, too, it's destructive to be afraid. Allow me, allow me to quote Noam Chomsky from his book, Optimism Over Despair. Noam says, we have two choices, two choices. We can pessimistic, can be pessimistic, give up and help ensure that the worst will happen. Or we can be optimistic, grasp the opportunities that surely exist and maybe help to make, help to make, the, to make the world a better place to make the world a better place. This goes to the very core of what DLD is about. I believe that there is reason, lots of reason for optimism. The digital age offers us boundless opportunities, but we need courage to seize them and, not, and, to, not, and, and to deal with the challenges along the way. Yes, we need courage. Courage is a powerful emotion. It's the opposite of fear. It's the fuel that drives us to overcome boundaries in our life, in our businesses, and the worst, those in our mind. Courage gets us fired up to see the glass half full, not half empty. Don't you think so? Half full, not half empty. Furthermore, optimism has a profound role in human affairs. In its source is the power of knowledge, says Albert Wenger, who will be speaking, speaking here later today. And what is the best way to gain knowledge? The great writer Yuval Noah Harari says in his 21st lessons for the 21st century, humans think in stories rather than in facts, numbers, or equations. And the simpler the story is, the better. Here at DLD, we are certainly not giving you simple stories, but we are happy to be your narrators and navigators in a complex world. We will provide the narrative of the digital age by allowing you to dive into bus topics like blockchain, artificial intelligence, spatial computing, VR and AR, food engineering or quantum computing. To take things further, we are stepping out of the one-sided view to Silicon Valley when looking for the next big thing. We are stepping out. I think there are many other next big things in the world. It's no secret new innovation ecosystems are on the rise of the, out of, outside of the US as they are more agile, have hungry talent, wider, wider resources. Let's learn about them and try to understand how they tick. China, you all know it, is leapfrogging the US and Europe when it comes to key 21st century technologies. Let's bet on questions like these. Who is winning the global race in artificial intelligence, for example? Who will be the global fintech champion? Hardware, hardware innovations. We will, see, will we see the end of the age of Apple? The digital classroom, how do we combine learning and technology? What's the upcoming investment hotbed? To get latest updates, we have invited experts from Europe, Israel, and the US. 
but also from China, Latin America, and Africa. Speaking of Africa, I believe we should have it much more on our radar. Not only is the, vast, is the vast continent on the brink of becoming the new world's new workbench, it's also a brilliant example for optimism and courage, despite so many challenges. We have never welcomed more speakers and guests from Africa at DLD than this year to give us a glimpse into the continent's opportunities and innovation potential. How does innovation happen? Kara Swisher, my good friend, describes it like this in her New York Times opinion piece, The End of the Age of Apple. How innovation happens is a much more delicate thing than people imagine. It's a dance involving money, opportunity, timing, execution, execution, and most important, one great, behind it, great idea behind it all. Where is that next spark that will us light us all up? My aim for the next days is to light you up and spark your optimism and courage. DLD is a three-day bonanza, service-oriented bonanza, in boosting <laughs> your knowledge and leaving your comfort zone. Leaving your comfort zone. This is very important. Forget your old patterns, get new friends, get new insights, get new ideas. DLD is a life medium that gives you just, not just news, but also economy, politics, science and culture, and of course, opinion. The only difference is that we don't separate the section from each other, but present them in a well-curated mix, just, in the like, just like in the real world. We provide actionable insights to the, into the disruptions of our industries. We look, we look at how companies scale machine learning and use AI to transform core parts of their businesses. We highlight how to strengthen and to transform existing business models and how to stay in control of your distribution channels in today's platform economy. See it as our service to you and a free course in agile management on top. We are an agile conference. My vital message to you is once again, let's strive to seize the chances of the digital world with good business, good ideas, and optimism. Education and the power of knowledge is the key to this. Again, education and the power of knowledge is the key to change depression. But as long as we don't manage to reinvent or rebuild the schools, the universities, and business education systems for the digital age, we are fighting a lost cause. Let's push this all to get for this all together. Would you like to join me in this push? Yeah. It's important. And now for us, a little bit of housekeeping. After more than 10 years at the same location, we are breaking new ground here at the Alte Kongresshalle and the Transport Museum. We, DLD itself, have to reinvent our format. It was a somehow courageous decision to leave the heart of the city, and I'm optimistic that it was a good one. You can see it. I look forward to creating a new DLD spirit here with you. We have two stages with equally existing content. I really encourage you to see as soon as possible the, st um, st um, the next stage at the Transport Museum. Um, it's not only, it's almost 50 steps from here. It's a beautiful stage with beautiful content. You really should find out. It's only a short walk to the museum stage from here, and we have warm jackets out, as well as umbrellas, but we don't need the umbrellas to make the transfer easy for you. Last but not least, DLD wouldn't be possible without the valuable input and contributions from our amazing partners. Many, many thanks. Please, can, you, can we have the picture of the good partners? <laughs> Where is it? Look at this. Bravo. I'm very proud to have you on board, dear partners. If you, 
dear DLD community, want to meet anyone in particular. As I said, we are a service conference. Please don't hesitate to ask me or the DLD team. We are happy to connect you. And now it's my pleasure to wish you an insightful DLD, and happy DLD, a new DLD, and to call on stage my wonderful DLD chairman, Yossi Vardi. Good afternoon. We have a lot of work to do. <laughs> when you go on the bus, I don't know if anybody of you guys went on the bus in the last five years. Anybody use the bus? Raise your hand. It's a public. OK. <laughs> That's a good surprise. When you are in the bus and you stand five centimeter from somebody you don't know, which happened, and you begin to talk to him, or her, he will be shocked. He will regard it as invading his personal space. So people stand in the bus five minutes from the other guy and pretend that they don't know the lady and they pretend they don't know them. In a conference, we have this invention. This is not a badge. This is a social contract which say, hi, I welcome you, though I don't know you, to come and talk to me. And if you want to derive value from the conference, spend as much time in the conference room as outside of the conference room. Now I ask everybody to show his badge to the people around him. <laughs> which means you are invited to speak. If you want, you can add your email address to the badge, and then the people who want can take a photo of the email, and you don't have to handle out business cards, which ruin the, ruin the world in a number of ways. So this is, this is regarding the social thing now. Few reflections about optimism. Steffi told you that the pessimists see the half empty, the optimists see the half full, and the realists take the glass and run away with it. <laughs> the story, the story say that Elizabeth Taylor, who, who remember who was Elizabeth Taylor? Raise your hand. Okay. She, she was asked, I don't know if it's true, but this is the story, she was asked, how come you go into your seventh marriage? She says, she said, allegedly, that this is the triumph of optimism over experience. <laughs> so, and I would like also to quote our late president, Shimon Peres, who was a, a frequent visitor in our event in Davos in the DLD uh, nightcap, who said always that optimists and pessimists die the same way, but they live totally different lives, so why not being optimist? <laughs> so I guess this is where I will stop and let you continue the... The next stage, other stage. Ah, yeah, she told me to promote... No, no, you told me you have to promote Brain Lab. Yes. So I, I'm under very strong instruction. If you want to see the future, go to the second building and ask the second building, which is... Maybe we should, we should thank our host. Can you stand up, please? This yes. is the Director General of the Deutsche... <laughs> Museum. He is, he is still, he is still in his studying phase. He's running the museum only 15 years, and he's hosting us in the other room. And he told me uh, the following story. Anybody know who was the first driver of car in the world of motor car? You know, I know. Anybody else? 
Daimler Benz. BMW. Benz, Benz. She, who said Bertha Benz? Can you stand? Can you stand? Ah, sure, Alex, you, you know. So, so Bertha Benz, the wife of Mr. Benz, while he was working on his car, which was the first one, stole one Sunday the car and went to visit somebody in the next village 30 kilometers away. There was no fuel, so she used alcohol from the pharmacy, right? Yes. And if you want to see the car, you can see the car, you can see Bertha. <laughs> if you want to see the car, it's in the museum, you should go and see it. So we promoted the venue, we promoted Brain Lab. Brain Lab, I didn't promote Brain it. Lab, yes. Brain Lab, sure, after I promoted your car, you are, it's okay, but the Brain Lab people want to get some promotion also. This is, this is a virtual reality, science fiction come into real reality. Brain Lab. Brain Lab and Rim Yunus, are you here? Rim, she didn't come yet. And tomorrow or on Monday, you will be able also to hear Rim Yunus. She is a lady from Nazareth, which is a small town in uh, Israel, which had something to do with history. <laughs> and she and her husband developing a guidance system while, while you insert an uh, electrode into the brain to do what is called deep brain stimulation to avoid Parkinson, you need to guide the electrode into the right place, which is about eight millimeter size. This group of Arab, Jews, uh, Muslims, Christians, etc., working from Nazareth, the most unlikely or one of the unlikely places, they created this technology. She will be on the stage. There are wonderful people all around you. And the biggest value that I think from this event is not only hear, hearing the wonderful speech. Where is uh, Scott? Scott is here. Scott is coming tomorrow. Scott is coming tomorrow. Uh, but meeting the wonderful people, should we give them two minutes to meet the people around them? Or we should? No. no. Go on. You, if you want to meet the people around you, I have to tell you, I have two, two women that I'm afraid with. One is my wife. She's here, and the other one is Steffi, because if I don't behave, she don't invite me to be next to the chairman. So I have to <laughs> follow all. Enjoy the conference. Enjoy the conference. It's the mantra. Um, I forgot to welcome many dignitaries here. One dignitary I see here in the first row is Cardinal Marx. Cardinal Marx, I'm very happy that you're here. You make a di big difference. Thank you for coming. You know, do you know where we, here, where we are here? We're in Munich. I have to tell you a secret. Munich is my favorite city in the world. It's a fantastic city, and I love it. And therefore, I'm very proud that for the first time, the mayor of Munich welcomes DLD. Mr. Reiter, please come on stage.